So, Scott, man, how are you doing today? Pretty good. Oh, oh. It's a little cold here in Tennessee. How about you? Good. It is uh, pretty chilly here in Florida. I think it is. What is it outside? It's funny because I just got back from Savannah and it was it was cool there, but I think like Florida, if it hits sixty or like even sixty five, I feel like it's colder than most places. Just yeah. because we're not used to having it that cold here. Yeah. But it's not bad. For a bit and everyone, it was like if it hits sixty, um, people would walk out in like full on flannels, uh, jeans. They have like the UGG boots on. <laughs> it's only sixty degrees. It's funny. Yeah, it's 57 here, so definitely it's no, definitely like that over here. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, man. So I'm recording this call. Um, and I guess just tell me and tell everyone that's be watching this a little bit about who you are, what you're doing, and then what you're looking to get help with. So I know you told me everything in the email, but mm -hmm. you know, it's just bring it up for everyone. Yeah, for sure. So I'll just kind of go through it. Uh, my name is Eli Grice. I'm 19. I'm in Tennessee. Um, I've been doing videos since I was about 13 and I started with weddings. Um, I did that until I was about 16, 17. Still doing here and there, but kind of started to phase out of it just because um, I think anyone, I think a lot of people start in weddings and it's very easy to get burnt out. Yeah. It's not what you're passionate about. That was me. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, around 16, I met a guy um, he kind of worked as my mentor for a while who specialized more in photography and I definitely kind of had my, uh, my side, I prefer video. Um, so at the time it was great just because he would often sell us as a package to companies. It's easier to go through one person for both services rather than getting multiple people. Yeah. Um, and it led us to a lot of crazy places. Like we went to Seattle, Hawaii, um, New York, Texas, all for kind of different things working with, um, in Hawaii, it was, it was called Badass Copy of Hawaii um different weddings uh mercury insurance just kind of a lot of random things cool and it's been a lot of cool experiences but especially now i ended up i graduated high school early um wanting to pursue film and one of the things i found is that um this guy who i worked with a lot as well as there's another guy i work with i work with um it's been amazing because they fronted me as a business um, so oftentimes going in, a lot of people don't trust someone who's 19 and looks like they're 12, yeah, um, yeah. with a big budget. And, uh, so it was cool just cause they were, the, they are definitely better as far as business. Um, so it was cool to have them front me, but one of the things of kind of realizing, and it's, it's been the process of a while of realizing is that even though I'm working with them and I'm building up, uh, technical skills, whether it's video lighting, like any of those things, um, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm building their business because I'm doing it under them. Um, and while that's great for them, like I, they're my friends, so I want, I want them to grow. It's also um, thinking about myself, it, it hasn't grown my business at all. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to clients, whenever I'm doing work for them, um, obviously they're taking a portion of that because it's like a finder's fee, whatever it is. Um, but when it comes to doing work on my own, I feel like I've kind of hit a wall as far as uh, what I can charge, the people I can get, if I can even get people. Um, so it's just been a, kind of a struggle recently, um, more particularly just this year as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, one, finding clients on my own rather than through them, and two, getting jobs that I feel like I'm getting paid, whether it's what I'm worth or, um, I know in one of your calls you talked about the phone test. Like if a, if a client calls, are you happy to pick up the phone and answer like you're serving them, what, what are their needs or are you dreading it? Um, I'd say 90% of my calls this year I dread <laughs> because it's more of like, um, just kind of take it because you can't get anything else. Mm -hmm. And um, not to be prideful because I know there's always room for growth, but I feel like with my portfolio and where I'm at as far as what I can display, um, it's not like I'm going to a company and saying like, hey, let me make a video for you. I don't have anything to show for it. Yeah, I have yeah. like a solid example of promotional videos and stuff like that on my website. Um, and I feel like it should at least be good enough to warrant a bigger budget or clients at least saying yes. Mm -hmm. um, I right now for the past month, I've been sending out 15 to 20 emails a day. Um, I kind of went through all your old calls and just kind of listened to them. So okay. I've gone to dentists, lawyers, um, mortgage brokers, um, especially marketing agencies. I worked with a few marketing agencies in the past and they've been great just because you know how it is. They find the work for you. Um, but recently the few marketing people that I worked with ended up 
they did their own um, they had their own businesses and they ended up selling up shop with COVID and going to work for another marketing agency um, that has their own people. So those kind of fell through. And uh, yeah, I mean, you, I know in one of your videos, you even talked about your sister had like a hundred calls and one of them worked out. Um, and I, I haven't- out, They told her no. Like she emailed a hundred yeah. people. One person told him no, but it's a process. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's just, it's trying to, trying to find those clients even um i know you talked about like events like if you're wanting a dentist go to a dentist event mm -hmm. um, but with covid now the, we don't even have those yeah um so it's hard um i my the kind of barrier i'm hitting right now is like the two three hundred dollar mark anytime i ever present something more than that um the clients kind of like get a little wavering and shake their head and it's kind of cornered me in this market mm -hmm. um I have had clients before that have paid more, but they were all through those marketing agencies where they did the business end. Um, yeah, uh, my goal is like I, for a while I was just kind of going up pricing by project. Um, and I finally put together an hourly half day and day rate that I felt comfortable with. Um, so my hourly is 200, my day rate is 750, or my half day rate is 750, and then my full day rate is 1500. Okay. That's funny because those are those are my day rates right now as well. Well, so my full day rate's eight hundred, and half day is sixteen. But I just bumped it up to nine hundred for half day, and then eighteen for full day. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. So, uh, is there any reason that you are trying to just break out into your own, your own thing right now? um apart from those two other people i've been working with um one is financially it's not um it's not something that's sustainable um like if i'm wanting to grow whether that's going right now i'm living with my parents because i'm 19. Yeah. um whether it's going to um like try to find an apartment to live in whatever it is it's just not financially sustainable for me mm -hmm. and also having to completely rely on them for my income um, one of them in particular who I do most of my work with, he's big on investment. So he has a few different um, rental properties, things like that. And because of that, he's been scaling back on his work mm -hmm. because he has passive income coming in. Yeah. Um, and because of that, it's, it's brought my work down because he's doing less as well. Um, so that's, that's been one of the main reasons is he's scaled back a ton. Um, and the other guy I work with on a less frequent basis has done the same. Cool. All right. Um, so I guess let's start with this finder's fee thing that they do for you. How does that work out? So they're like, you're, they're closing a deal for you. You're giving them a percentage. Uh, yeah. I don't even, um, I don't even know what percentage it is. Honestly, most right. of the time, what it is is that they, they'll have a client and they'll be like, so they're already doing photo for a client, say um, one client in particular is a sock company. Um, say they're doing photos for them and they'll be like, Hey, we noticed that you guys either lack video or the video you have could use some improvements. I have a guy that I can bring in, um, and he'll pitch them a number. It's, I don't know what it is, but given our relationship, it's something that I haven't felt comfortable with fully talking about. Um, not comfortable talking about the money or. Yeah. Like how the, the few times that I've figured out what they're actually charging them has typically been Sam in the car with them and there's a phone call. Uh -huh. um things like that and that's what kind of opened my eyes to it a little bit is just how much they're being able to charge for it um and how much i'm pulling away which why i respect a finder's fee you're also not doing the work um so it's like i think there's an acceptable kind of range in there as far as like i think it goes both ways um and there have just been a few times where i felt a little bit taken advantage of yeah, I mean, that happens because I mean, I'll be honest with you, bro. That has happened with uh, me with someone that I've actually used that kind of backfired for me because mm -hmm. he watched one of my videos and he's like, "Oh, you're getting paid." He's like, "You're getting paid three thousand dollars for a video. Like, you pay me three fifty for today." I was like, "I get it," but like, I asked you what your rate was, and you know, you told me that you're okay with that, so I yeah. paid you what you wanted. You know what I mean? It wasn't like you told me hey how much is it and you're like oh it's 1500 bucks i'm like okay i'll pay you 350. that's me mm -hmm. taking advantage of you so i think um you know you need to have that conversation about um you know the the money thing 
and sometimes talking about money does get uncomfortable because we're not you know really taught to talk about money um but it also depends on the kind of relationship you have have with these people um so i guess like i think the best way to approach this would be like, hey, he's moving forward. Uh, you know, if you're gonna be booking me four gigs, my hourly rate is 200 an hour. And then mm -hmm. I don't know how you figure out like editing within all of that. But I guess like you need to give them your rates. Uh, so, you know, that's one of those things when you're working with another agency, it's hard for you to, you know, come in asking for a price when somebody's bringing you the client or the lead. Yeah. Versus like today I sent a proposal for uh, a custom home builder, like one video was three thousand dollars, two videos was five grand, two other videos were eight grand. There was just like different levels of production. Mm -hmm. Then I was like three videos was ten thousand dollars, right? So if somebody, if another agency came to me, they're like, hey, we have a client, and they're telling me what their budget is. It's a different story, but it's one of those things when you're dealing. When you're dealing with the client itself, you are able to charge as much as you want and then you hire out other people to do the work. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, that's kind of like, you know, any in entrepreneurship that anybody embarks, somebody, they're taking all the risk and bringing everything on and, you know, you're getting paid a, a cut of that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I mean, I think having a finder's fee, having a conversation with them would be the the best way to approach it. Just let them know, be like, hey, um, and have a conversation. Uh, you know, I had, when the situation happened with me, uh, you know, the person text messaged me this, and I was like, yo, like, um, you know, like, I thought we're cool. Like, yeah. if there's an issue, just talk to me, because you never know how a text message uh, can come off. And you just wanna sure. you know, listen to them, or like, you know, they sound like a little hesitant, like, hey, what is the issue? You know, I, mean, I hear that you sound hesitant when I told you this, um, you know, mm -hmm. what is the problem there? You're gonna be able to have that conversation. So you really wanna be tuned in with that. Um, so that's your finder's fee kind of dilemma you're dealing with. The next thing you said was finding clients. And then you said you're emailing 15 to 20 emails per day. You're getting, mm -hmm. what kind of response are you getting? None. <laughs> what are your emails no, sound like? Ideas. Uh, sorry, say again? What are your emails sound like? Like, what are you emailing these clients? Like, pretend yeah, for you're sure. emailing me. Um, I can pull one up right now. Uh, so typically what I do is I do a first round where um, I kind of send it out and then three days later, if I haven't received this response, I just kind of follow up. Mm -hmm. um, What's see. your first email? What does it sound like? Um, pull one up right now. There you go. Um, so this is to a uh, local mar marketing agency in the area. It's, uh, hey, Phil South Marketing. Uh, my name is Eli Grice, and I'm a photographer and videographer in the Nashville, Tennessee area. Uh, I noticed that you guys don't I noticed that you guys don't typically provide video for your clients and I would love to partner with you um, in providing this service. Growing up in Florida, I've seen move 18 times, led me to have a passion for people and the stories. Um, and I feel like this would be a great partnership with you. This passion ultimately revealed itself when I picked up a camera at 12 years old to film my first wedding. After seven years in the industry, I've worked with clients both nationally and globally, such as Haiti Maid, Marriott, Badass Copy of Hawaii, ACD Guatemala, Airbnb, Mercury Insurance, and many more. Um, my faith plays a significant role in my life and my goal is to use photography and videography to connect people in a similar way um, with all that said i love the standard of i love the standard that you guys hold yourselves to with your work and i would love to work with you below i've linked my website where you can view my portfolio i look forward to hearing from you all right we're gonna have to cut that down short a lot um, all right. it just it's it's a lot for anyone that you know me mm -hmm. just listening to it i was like okay that's it because people are skimming through the email, right? Uh, so yeah. Let me go to my account. Let me pull up um, marketing sales documents, automation sequences. Where is my email? Dentist prospects. Can I see this? Edit. Okay. Um, so, like, if it was a marketing, oh, also, I guess my other thing, are you using any type of 
like tracking software for emails? Are these people opening your emails? I have no idea. I saw you suggest on one of them. It was called like, is it Vidyard Go? So you Vidyard Go, it's they. They're more of like a video messaging thing. Like I can like embed a video message inside of my email. What I'm referring to, it's like some type of CRM software that allows you to. Um, let me see if I can pull this up. Um, yeah, so I mean, I can't pull it up right now because I have like too much client information on here, but pretty much yeah. there's um, software that allows you, that would tell you, um, fucking, let's show you this one. Um, let's see, screen share. All right, cool. You can see my screen. Yeah. All right. So up here. So right now, this is somebody I'm emailing for like an intern thing that she wants to work with me. Mm -hmm. So right now, my email that I sent to her, it says it's been open four times, right? And it tells me it's been open from you know a computer, blah 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 blah. blah. Yeah. On here, it's been open seventy five times. This is like introduction email from somebody else. This is another client of mine that pretty much is telling me, you know, normally it would tell you too, like if it's from a cell phone or a computer, so you can know if they're like, cause right now it's telling me this is all coming from a computer, right? So mm -hmm. that would tell me like, hey, these people are on their computer, they're at a desk. So for, it's a great time for me to call them. Um, yeah. We need to have an understanding, are your emails going through or not? Mm -hmm. Right now, everyone that's watching this and giving you guys gold, I was actually gonna sell this email sequence here. But so in the same way, you just got to take this and then change it to what you're doing. But this one is like, hey, doctor, whatever. I came across your reviews in Google. Your patients have some great things to say. Insert comment there, right? So like right now, the biggest thing I saw with you, it was like, you're like, hey, marketing agency, right? Like you took no time to find out who was the person behind the marketing agency. I mean, we live in a digital world that you could spend a little bit of time on LinkedIn or just even looking through the reviews, looking through the website and finding out who is the person that I'm trying to reach. Cause you yeah. know, we're all humans and if, like we want to connect us, you know, with someone. So, you know, spending a little bit of time to find out who is it that you're email that you're going to email is going to mm -hmm. help you at least set your foot in the door with somebody. Right. So yeah. that would be the one thing that would change. So you want to start off complimenting them, right? You want to make this about mm -hmm. them. So I just put on um, like, you know, uh, Tasca Studios helps dentists showcase your practice with dental practice videos using YouTube and Facebook. We had some great results for our clients like Riverbend Family Dentistry and Palms Dental Cares and others in the area. These videos have been cost effective, time efficient for our clients, allowing them to make a great first impression, patients searching the web. We love to find out more about your marketing goals. Let me know if you have some time to chat this week. So in most part, you want to like praise them in the beginning, be like, yo, marketing agency, I saw you guys do some really dope work. I love the project you did mm -hmm. with Coca-Cola. Uh, my name's Ellie. Uh, I work with local agencies and small businesses and help them create content. I've had some great results working with brands like Airbnb, Mary, try like sometimes too. I had that issue when I first got started that I was putting too high name of brands on there. The people would be like, Well, if you're working with Hope Living and all these companies, then why are you reaching out to us since you're working with yeah. clients? Right? So, I think like putting a staple of you know, maybe some local recognized brands. Like for me, in this email, I have the company you can see my screen, mm -hmm. yeah. Right? So like, you know, they click on this, this is gonna take them to the project that I did Riverbend, right? That's another thing I see all the time when people be like, hey, is it okay if I send you my reel? I'm like, no, mm -hmm. you just send me your, like you getting, like you wanna minimize your client's inboxes. So like you asking them to, you know, the permission to send it, make, you gotta make it super easy for them. So like if you're contacting, you know, a construction company, show a construction video, if you're, you know, doing a hotel show your airbnb make it relevant mm -hmm. to the person that you're talking to 
Yeah. So, you know, work with them in the area. These videos help, you know, increase your brand awareness. Da, 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 da. I would love to then in your in your situation be able to find out more about marketing. Uh, we'd love to find out if you guys have an internal video team or if you're looking to partner up with someone, uh, you know, let's find a time this week to chat. Short yeah. and sweet. Um, and then, you know, and from there, you want to, my recommendation for you is to do the email copy. I'll do about 10 emails with the same um, body and then I'll yeah. change the subject line. Every 10 emails, change the subject line. You want to find out which ones are working for you. It's really hard to find out, you know, you, you emailed all these people and have no way of tracking people open them or not. It makes yeah. your job a lot harder when to follow up because, you know, you might have one dude that opened up your email five times and when you get the notification they're open the sixth time, usually what I'll do, I'll be like, like, hey, John, I just want to follow up. Did you get my emails? They're like, holy shit, I was actually just looking on my computer right now and I was actually looking at your thing. You want to be able to maximize and take advantage of those situations. So, um you know, and I think that that would be like the first way to kind of approach that half to all you want to do at this point is open that line of communication with the client. Yeah, you said it's called HubSpot CRM. Yeah, HubSpot CRM. HubSpot CRM is a little bit pricey. I think mm -hmm. right now there's so I think there's a free version that allows you to track like 200 emails per month. Yeah. Um, so with that, I'll say, you know, you got to be a little bit more strategic about mm -hmm. which ones you're tracking versus uh, which ones you're not. I got lucky that I like bought the software before they upped their price. So I have unlimited and I pay 50 bucks a month, but there's some yeah. other ones out there that are free. It's just do a little bit of research or like, call like email tracking CRM. Um, Cause you want to be able to, you know, you want to be able to track these customers. So like the core thing of HubSpot or most, CRM softwares, which stands for client relations management, you can mm -hmm. put in notes about the people there. So you can put in like, you know, head of marketing at whatever agency, here's oh, a okay. number, stuff like that. It makes it easier for you to keep track of all of that. Yeah, for sure. That makes sense. Yeah. So the other thing is um, before you start emailing a lot of these clients, this goes more into like email tactics and stuff like that. You never want to just blast out like 10 emails back to back to like a client what you want to do actually is like warm up your inbox so uh pretty much what you want to do is you know email your parents email a friend get a couple of replies going in your mailbox to just show google or gmail i don't know who you're using that your account's active because if you go out and you just send out 10 emails with the same subject lines out code you're gonna get flagged by Google. Um, you know, if you have a brand new email, or what kind of email are you using? Like, do you have a proper email or are you using it at gmail.com? Uh, it's, it's specific to my website. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so you know, you wanna warm that up and then you wanna start sending out the emails and then keep track. I'll say every 10 uh, subject lines, change it up. And then you keep like, okay, these are people opening more than others. Um, you know, using an emoji, like I use a video emoji in a lot of mine, uh, that yeah. tends to help. So that's something else that I'll, uh, you know, look into doing. What are your thoughts on, um, cause right, like I know, so you have like, for example, you have like Ripper Bend Dental and if you click on it, it pops up that video. Mm -hmm. Um, I've thought about, cause right now I'm just linking my, my website. And as soon as I click on that, it pulls up my, uh, my promotional videos. Um, what are your thoughts? And I guess that's where like Vidyard go. Cause I've thought about making a specific reel and then like embedding that into the email mm -hmm. just so that they have to see it there rather than going to the website, just so it's one less step. Yep. Um, yeah. Have you found that that's helped at all? It does help. Uh, the cool thing about Vidyard go is that you'll get a notification of when they opened, uh, the video and when they watched it. Mm -hmm. So like for a sales process, it helps a lot. Um, but I definitely think making a video that's relevant to who you're uh, working with is the best way to do it. I personally haven't done a reel in like four years. Um, yeah. I'd rather just send them to either, you know, the client's webpage where they can see the video on there 
or mm -hmm. embedding that or like just sending a link just you know pretty much pasting the link within like hyperlinking it in the email so when they click yeah. on it they see that video my big thing i don't like doing is just attaching the link of my website and uh just telling them like hey here's my website go check out my work because mm -hmm. that you're just open a whole book of worms that you're not really guiding them to where you want them to go you're letting you're taking a chance that they're gonna find what you're hopefully you know yeah to find that makes sense. Um, and it kind of good on like kind of the same with that. Cause like, for example, yours was the dentist one. Um, and you referenced, referenced other dental clients. Um, especially cause I, I feel like with where I am with kind of like the, the market that I got like cornered into as far as budget wise, I feel like I'm essentially having to start over just trying to find new clients. Mm -hmm. Um, and with that said, do you, do you think it's important to try to find like a niche and stick with that similar to how you found dental or going with like specifically gyms? Yeah. Uh, I mean, finding a niche, I'll tell you what, it makes your job a lot easier, right? Like finding a niche in the long run makes your job a lot easier, mm -hmm. but it's also one of those things that um, when you're just starting out and you're just trying to get clients, you trying to find a a niche makes your job a lot harder right because you're still working through the process of understanding how to get clients and work with them and maybe you know you if you niche down too early you might be missing out on a type of client you really like working with so i think when you're first starting out and you're trying to just figure out who you should be like what kind of gigs you should be shooting i say you take on everything like you know mm -hmm. it's one of those things that you're still young like I'll work on my craft, I'll work on my business, and then eventually I'll transition. Because a big thing for a lot of people or like a lot of upcoming videographers is that the market is moving so much that like you, if you're gonna be just a videographer, like you're better off going to go work for a company that's looking for an internal video person. Because mm -hmm. for the most part, for a lot of people, when you're like talking to these businesses, like you're pitching them video, like they are trying to solve a problem. So like you need yeah. to be able to help them solve that problem, either through like optimizing video for search and working with the SEO team or like mm -hmm. actually running ads for them. But like, I think that goes you know a little bit deeper. So like there's one company right now, cause I'm uh, pitching this, uh, this construction company. Uh, they do like a custom home, uh, let me find this. Uh, is it this vids? Yeah, so I think like this is a great company that when it comes down to like niching down, like they're doing a great job because it makes it like yeah. super easy. So like this company here, they're based out of uh, Australia. So they pretty much work. They focus on working with you know um, construction companies. Like if you are mm -hmm. a home builder, this is all they do. Is like you know they only work with those kind of clients. So yeah, you know, somebody's, if there's a home builder that's looking for someone, they'd be like, hey, listen, we worked with a bunch of home builders before. We understand the process. We, we know what goes into this versus somebody else that does weddings and, you know, music videos and that. This company is going to stand out a lot more versus another one. So, like, niche yeah. down, I think it's great, but it's like, you know, they're also, like, part of a team of people they also do like, you know, a bunch of different type of, uh, you know, services and things like that. But I think in the beginning, you need to just find a place that you're getting like constant work and you're just shooting all different types of things. Like right now, my buddy, Chris Franklin, uh, he's out of Mississippi and he's working with a, a branding agency. Like, uh, so like pretty much these come this brand, this brand, wow, this branding agency uh, they write a bunch of clients that need work kind of like, they're kind of like a marketing agency, but they're like, he's working on doing like brand story videos. Right. Yeah. And they're, he's shooting like three or five videos a week. Mm -hmm. These are like two to $3,000 projects per week. He just like yeah. breaking in right now. Uh, so like he's shooting a bunch of different things, but he's focusing on doing these, you know, three minute brand story videos. That's how he's niching himself down. Mm -hmm. um so you know i don't know what kind of videos you like shooting but i think you need to start gravitating towards that so like you know if you like doing interviews 
then start getting more into doing interviews and become you know, one of the best people in your area to capture interviews. If you like doing promo videos and social media, focus on like, hey, we create you know, dope ass Instagram videos for businesses. And that's yeah. how to market yourself with. Right? And you can work with a bunch of different types of companies. Mm -hmm. For sure, that makes sense. Uh, what's your website? www.eligre com. Would you build your website with? Squarespace. Cool. Event videos, promotion videos, roasting videos, wedding videos. Yeah, so I mean, I think the big thing here, I'd probably, honestly, I'll probably remove, I'll probably throw these event videos mm -hmm. inside of this promotion video. Yeah. I'll get rid of weddings unless you're doing a lot of them and getting paid good money for them. I'm not wanting to do weddings. I just had them up there. Yeah, I'll take it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Geography videos a unique way to connect with your audience and know the most likely Yeah, so like I think there's a little bit of like so like me personally, like you know, if I was a business and you just reached out to me and I came to look at your website, I would definitely be like, Okay, I'm not like I still feel like you're very young in the way that you're presenting yourself. Mm -hmm. Um how much of the photo stuff do you like doing? uh i love i love photo stuff um yeah i enjoy it i prefer to be doing video um i just kind of take photos because i feel like a lot for me for some reason it's been easier to sell photography than it has video okay cool and what's the pricing difference on the two for you is it the same or uh no it's it's a little bit cheaper um typically i just go by hourly 200 uh -huh. um but most of the shoots are typically about like one to two hours so all the shoots are about like around 300 okay yeah so i mean like in this situation with this stuff i'll probably i'll lose all of these type of shots mm -hmm. and i would only have like you know like i'll put like photography restaurants i would make like a section for restaurants like anything like this for just lifestyle things like this i would scrape it off your website like you need to let them know that like hey i work with businesses and this is the kind of content that we do for businesses. If you're looking for like lifestyle content, I would put that in there. But yeah, um, just to make it a little bit more unified, because like right now, the photos are kind of you know all over the place. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. do something with the grid, so it allows me to kind of look through everything a little bit easier versus having to scroll down through everything. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, geography. Yeah, so I think the biggest thing with this is um, you know, we need to work on this template just so it changes a little bit more. So it's like, so let me see. Bookmarks. Yes, I literally have, like what I do when I'm bored, I literally go to the internet and I look up other production companies like in different major cities mm -hmm. and like I always just look for ideas of, so this is something else I think it's going to be huge. And if you get into it early in your area could work out for you, but like right now Hulu is about to launch a program that you're able to run your own ads inside of Hulu for like streaming. So you're talking about 15 or 30 second videos, right? But yeah. you know, this company here, quick frame, you know, let your brand shine on the big screen, uh, stop or whatever, blah, 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 contact us, ads optimized for Hulu, made easy. You know, it's very straight lined of what, you know, what they do, who they help, a couple of simple videos. I think mm -hmm. this is what you kind of need to move forward with for your website. So when somebody lands on that website, they know exactly what you do. Um, they call it the, what is it, the caveman, the caveman test. Like if like you showed a caveman, your, um, you know, your website in three seconds, could he know what, like what you offer? And that's, yeah. that's for attention span. So let me mm -hmm. see, hello, we're still in trivia. This company's fucking sick. Like you do really good shit. 
So hello, hello, we're a sandwich. You make commercials, the kind of people will like scroll down to see some more. Um, this is a huge company out of LA. They 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 start their projects at a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> That's funny. Um, you know, that logo is dope. Yeah, sandwich. It's so fucking good, right? Like like the because yeah. the their whole branding. Like what I loved. Where is it? Um, why is this campaign that's contact about? They have this really fucking funny thing that just goes into like who they are. Like this right here. Is it this one that's it? Oh, so like normal mode and then agency mode. I thought this was so fucking oh, that's clever. sick. I was like, oh my god. I was like, this company is fucking sick. And like they that's do. That's dope. You know, normal mode. I just like, I was like, wow. I was like, they are fucking good. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's one of those things of, you know, look at what are these bigger people doing? Because like they're dealing, so like they're they're dealing with the clients that I want, right? I'm doing, you know, mm -hmm. three to five, 10,000 projects here and there. So like they are, they're dealing with the $100,000 projects. So like, you know, what are they doing that's getting them these gigs? How do they look like? What kind of videos are they making? And, you know, if you've watched some of my last videos, you want to be trading up to all these different things that you do. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, like, the first one is just looking at these different companies and seeing Five Media is another good one. They kind of, like, specialize in doing, um, like, uh, tourism videos. Yeah enter the site video production charleston and beyond so like you know and this helps this whole like video production in charleston this is an seo play right here like this has helped them get found in seo for google mm -hmm. have you have you done a business listing or anything like that no okay so um let me see this video production so like same thing up here if you see vibe media video production agency charleston south carolina Mm -hmm. Like my website's like kind of the exact same thing of, you know, video productions for all your business needs, whether you're looking to boost traffic, increase sales or connect with the customers, we can help watch videos, contact us. Like, you know, I have call to actions throughout here of what I want them to do. Yeah. We can also appear on the top left video production media agency, West Palm Beach, Pompano Beach, right? I'm optimizing my website for search what my clients are looking for. So like, you know, mm -hmm. Viratastic Studios, video production agency specializing in corporate video, blah, 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 blah. Making yeah. it very simple for someone that comes to my website, they know exactly um, what we're doing. So, and you got Squarespace. Um, you know, when you do have some, if you got some time or whatever, when you start working on this, let me know. Cause I actually migrated my website from Squarespace to Webflow, but I'm still very familiar with, um, with Squarespace. Yeah. So other things on here you want to add is going to be like a call to action. So like, mm -hmm. you know, contact us. You want to have your phone number here. So same thing here. So like right now, just looking at your website, I have no way of contacting you, even if I found you. Whatever here, contact us. Okay, so yeah, so like I would have this probably bigger. Uh, mm -hmm. I would have that information on your about page. Like, yeah you should probably have like, you know, that information everywhere. Cause at the end of the day, all you want them to do is to call you. So like you want to have mm -hmm. those call to actions throughout the website. Yeah. Um, so you're in Tennessee. Yes. So let's see. Um, uh, Tennessee. Uh, what town are you in? Uh, like Brentwood, Nashville. Nashville. Yeah. So let's just do, you know who the big players in your town are for like video? Um, it's all over because a lot of the companies in the areas have in-house production teams. Gotcha. Most of the other local video produ production companies are specific to weddings. Gotcha. So Nashville Video Guy, your productions, 29 website. See, like right here, award-winning sales and marketing videos for your business. So, like, you know, mm -hmm. that's, like, I'm telling you, like, that's the next move for a lot of people. But, like, right now, they make, looks like they make fucking just sales videos. Um, yeah. But, you know, for our client that comes in here, they're like, okay, if I'm looking for a sales video, 
this is the people that I know that they're able to do that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm actually going to add them to my video production. I'll scope them out later. Um, so the best way for you to, sh it's, it's, it can be a lot of work, but I'll recommend that you start doing is if you have a, a Gmail account, go to the little tabs on here and then find Google my business mm -hmm. and like put your name and information on there and set up your business on Google my business. And that's in the tab on the right by like email. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I think also like if you just do like, if you just go to Google and type in, you know, Google my business. Oh yeah. I got you. Yeah. Uh, so set this up. The next one I'll do is uh Bing. Bing. Yep. Um, I think it's called Bing places. And then the other one would be Yelp. Yelp. Yeah. And those are mostly just to help like your website get a little bit more traction because, uh, you know, when you go in there, you're putting in all your information of like your contact information, website, where you're located, um, things like that. Mm -hmm. That's just going to help Google see that your website's more credible and things like that. Uh, yeah. No, th that's like a whole other video on like optimizing your, your website for all of this. Um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, it took me about six months for me to show up in my area. But then I was also like, you know, I was very strategic about, so you're, you said you're in Brentwood. Yeah. So like, I'll try to say Brentwood. No, is it a uh, TN? Yeah, TN. Uh, Real Magic Media National Geography. Oh, are you in Production Hub? Production Hub? Yeah, I'll sign up for Production Hub uh, just to get yourself on there um, as like a vendor signed up from Production Hub. And then there's also sometimes there's gigs. Like I've gotten like, two good gigs um on here so you know you never know what's happening on here but you definitely want to be like you know and you get notifications when gigs show up in your area yeah but production hub don't check i don't really like they like have a really fucking sketchy way of like i've done thumbtack before and i, I didn't like it yeah Same it's, like, like, it's so yeah. sketchy of like hey buy these tokens and then we'll let you know you possibly can get this and there's other yeah. bidding on it i was like i don't like that shit um and let's try this like okay so now that we're here this is all um seo shit yeah i do all right so we kind of got we get you set away there. Um, the other question you had was about getting paid what you're worth. So when you're having these conversations with um, these clients, um, mm -hmm. so where's the hesitation? Where do you feel like you're not getting paid what you're worth? Tell me more about these talks. Yeah, um, a lot of it is just like, um, so the, the jobs that I would do outside of those two other people, whether they're photography or video, um, a lot of the ones were ones that I got stuck in whenever I first started out. Okay. So it was kind of that thing as far as like you give them a price and then as you grow, they don't want to grow with you. Okay. So they're like, even though it's four years later, they want the prices from before. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously whenever they're referring you, they're referring you to people who are in the same kind of financial situations. Um, and like how you refer to trading up, it's more of just trading parallel rather than mm -hmm. going up. Um, so it puts me in a position where I, I can't even if, like if I were to start charging more with them, they turn it down because they can't afford it. 
Um, but it's also what kind of business are these that they can afford it? Because you're saying two to three hundred bucks, right? Yeah. Um, also, okay, n not that they can't afford it. Like, so there's one particular company that I'm thinking of. Um, it does very well. They're a, a meal prep company in the area mm -hmm. that I've done a lot of work for. Um, and they'll shy away at anything over $300. And um, they're one like of the top ones. Them? Do what? Do you like working with them? I love the people. Okay. Um, but when it comes to money, a lot of times they want, they want a lot more than what you're getting paid for um so it just ends up turning into a hassle um it kind of one of those things where it's like you don't want to answer the phone just because you kind of feel like you're getting used from it um and they in particular um like they have the money for it they're just stingy all right um so it's like even with them it's like with clients that have the money for it um i'm trying to figure out i guess how to go in there and like you, you refer to finding the problem that they have um the problem that these people have is they don't put money into video at all. So like a lot of people, um, like they have good pictures on their Instagram, but they don't put out any ads or anything video wise. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like trying to get them to see that, but to also be willing to invest in it. Cause I feel like a lot of people can see the importance of marketing, but that doesn't mean they want to put the money into it. Yeah. Um, so when you're reaching out to these people, are you looking out to people like uh, when you go to like, when you type, how are you prospecting these clients that you're reaching out to? So uh, before, I, before I go there, I think what you need to start doing with these clients, your current clients, you need to provide them three pricing options. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, at 300 bucks, this is what you're gonna get. At $500, this is what I can give you. And at $700 or whatever it is you're trying to charge, this is what you're gonna get. Yeah. Give them a three pricing options, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, in that way, and they're like, Hey, we want more of this. Like, that's great. There's an extra charge with that. But it's one of those things too. Like you have to be willing to lose that client. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's one of those things that you're like, Hey, I want to help you. I want to grow. But like, if you're not willing, you know, I can't keep doing this at that rate. Something else mm -hmm. that you saw on your website is, um, put your videos into playlists. Playlists. So are your videos, uh, put them on a like, create a promotional video playlist. And then mm -hmm. when you upload the videos, upload it from like each video. So like that way, if I'm watching one of your videos. I actually next... recently did that because you recommended that on someone yeah. else's call. Uh, I tried that, I thought I did it because recently on YouTube, I put them all into a single playlist. So if you click on it on the website right now, it doesn't open it up. No, it goes to like, it shows up like uh, some random videos after that. So like all this work that you have up here is like you've done is this all you by yourself uh 90 percent of that is all me yeah bro i would literally like you could be charging way more money it, it it's frustrating because i don't want it to be prideful in the sense that like i want to charge more but like i i feel like for the level of work i'm providing i shouldn't feel financially strained in the way that i do Bro, um, I'll literally, like, I will, I will start flying out to Florida to start shooting for us. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, wait, so I want to try it because I, I clicked, uh, I, I put them in a playlist on YouTube. But I think with the whole Squarespace, you have to make sure is that it depends on what link you're sharing. If it's a playlist link or, like, the share link on the bottom, I always forget which one it is that, like, you need to do. Okay, because I, so I made the playlist after I uploaded them, and I also, I was just clicking, like, I was looking at each individual video and then getting the shareable link, uh -huh. so maybe I need to get, get the link from the playlist. Yeah, I always forget which one it is, because I actually went through that, that I was like, why the fuck are these things playing? Um, yeah, bro, but, like, your video, like, your Ajax alcohol distribution, like, it's a great video. I'm shooting an alcohol uh another distributing company alcohol like a commercial tomorrow but like you got some good shit Thanks, um I yeah i mean honestly bro i'll start telling clients right now that i'd be like hey minimum for promotion of our minimum for promotion of video is 500 bucks like mm -hmm. and then if it has like words and, and dialogues and interviews i'll be like interview videos and dialogue are 750 
um, you know, promotional videos, 30 seconds to a minute, 500 bucks. Like, you know, we can't do anything less than that. Yeah. But like, what camera are you shooting with? Uh, I shoot with an A7 III. Okay, dope. What profile are you using? Uh, I typically use HLG. Okay, cool. Like, um, good shit, man. Thanks, I appreciate it. And it's like, um, it's that's something I thought about too, because like what amazed me was it, you, you, at one point you ran through, uh, you were like in your first few years, you used like a Nikon 7, D7 something. And I'm thinking about it, like, I, I, I'm over here, and I have, like, I have the A7 III, I have a drone, I have a gimbal, I have multiple mics, lob, and boom. I have a freaking rifle case filled with three lights and C-stands, um, walking with massive diffusers. And it's like, I have all this stuff, but at the end of the day, like, the client doesn't care about any of that. Um, and it's like, I, I have everything I need to make an amazing video, but, like, clearly I'm selling something wrong. Like if you got that far with a D7 and it's like, obviously there's all cameras nowadays provide like amazing quality. Um, but it's like, there, there has to be a problem that I'm not solving for the client or something. I think it's, it's your brand and messaging. Like honestly, just looking like me not looking at your promotional videos, just landing on your website. At first I landed on your homepage. I probably have not made it to your promotional videos page. Mm-hmm. And I think, and that's the other thing that I went with, I think you need to start selling yourself as like a cinema, like I'll take the whole videography thing out, like start selling yourself as, you know, a cinematographer. I changed from like Rodrigo Tasca Productions to Tasca Studios for a reason, because I was dealing with that of like, like, hey, it's Rodrigo Tasca from Rodrigo Tasca Productions. And then they're like, the fuck's Rodrigo Tasca? And I was like, yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. So like the branding and messaging, it plays a huge thing with people. Um, and like the other thing on your promotional videos, I would break those down into like, you know, like I said, you want to make it super easy for the potential clients. So pull like short promo videos and pull like your three best short promo videos mm -hmm. on there. Interview style promo videos, your three best and like, you know, it's great you have a lot of stuff, but honestly, like, I don't think you need to show it all. I think yeah. showing your best stuff right now would probably be the best way to go. Mm -hmm. And then for the photography stuff, like, kind of the same thing. Like, I would, you know, for photography, I'll put, like, commercial photography. And I'll, like, versus you have commercial lifestyle studio, I'll put, like, Airbnb, coffee company like i'll break it down so if somebody comes in here like like oh this is everything he did for airbnb this is yeah. all he did for the coffee company make it like stupid easy for them to uh okay. to see what you're doing so rather than breaking it up like like it is do more like basically consider it all commercial and then break it into like like restaurant dentist uh yeah. gym things like that yeah, like bring yourself as a i'm a commercial videographer and photographer like if you want weddings and stuff you know uh, you know that's not me um and i think you need to have like kind of like two about like there's a certain there's an about you and then there's also like an about what you guys do um mm -hmm. i think that in itself um you know i think you need to figure that out for your company, how you want to write. Like, hey, we specialize in doing promotional videos for companies in the Brentwood, Nashville area, everything, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then you can have the about you. The only thing I would say is, I'm not sure that looks for kids, that's fine. Um, and then also, like, on your bot page, we have, like, you know, the Mary Hotel's Badass Coffee. Uh, hyperlink, or, like, they're called anchor links. You know, so right here it says Marriott Hotels. I should be able to click on Marriott Hotels on your about and see what you did with them. Okay, that makes sense. You know what I mean? So if like when you when uh, you link that, does it go directly? Like, does it have to go directly to their website, or is there a way to make like a separate page that has just that video that's like hidden? Do you know by any chance? Which video are you talking about? Like, uh, say the Marriott Hotels one. I did a promo video for a hotel that they just put in Nashville. Uh -huh. um, for something like that, like, 
when it comes to a website, do you just have like a, a separate page that's hidden that has that video on it that only comes up if they click that link? You could do that. You could create a, uh, a it's called like an unlisted page um, on a okay. uh, website. Why would you want to make it unlisted? Uh, just because I don't know how they would find, like, I don't uh, feel like that, that video might be under promotional videos in hotels. Um, but outside of that, it's not like I would have like a random link for that is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but like if they're reading that, reading that uh, bio and they want to click on it, I think yeah. it'd be cool if they were able to view it. Yeah. So what I mean, I, well, like what you can do with Squarespace when that video is on a page, you, it could literally like go right to that page or go right to that video, like Squarespace. Uh, mm -hmm. When you do that, it makes it super easy. The other thing I would do is you need to add like, um, like a logo strip of like all the different companies you work with on your homepage. And that yeah. kind of will help like solidify and give a little bit more like, brand consideration of like who you worked with um so let me see that so like what would you want to be getting paid right now um if i could be getting paid those that hourly day and full day or half day rate um i feel comfortable with that like to just to be fully transparent yeah. i booked one like I've booked one shoot, so taking weddings out of the picture, because I hate weddings to be, to be blunt. They suck. Hey, bro. I, feel like... <laughs> I just, it feels like the monotonous. Um, so I've done, I did one project with um, a local gun range that basically they wanted to film um, all of their in-person courses. So like concealed carry, basic handgun, things like that. They wanted to film them and put them online mm -hmm. in an online class platform so that they could sell them on there. Um, just because they didn't have enough instructors, it's another thing of income. Um, and that project I got for six grand, and it was uh, we filmed six different videos, um, and there were seven full days of shooting. Okay. Um, that was the biggest product I've ever gotten monetarily wise. Outside of that, I've had the next biggest thing I've had as far as projects is. Seven fifty. I got seven fifty one time. Mm -hmm. And then outside of that, I've done two videos for five hundred dollars, and everything else goes down to three hundred. I've had a ton of three hundred dollar ones. Um, and if I could, like, if I could sit comfortably at that half day mark of seven fifty, um, I'd be happy with that, just because it's it's being able to like trade up, um, and I at least feel like I'm moving up in that aspect. Yeah. So at the 750, that does that include editing as well? Or like what is like how are you charging for that? Yeah. Uh so typically whenever I would charge like 300, that would include everything. That would include like that wasn't limited to hours or anything. That was just a project rate. Um I, I just put together these the day, half day rate, and hourly I just put together last week. Uh, and ideally what I would want to do is charge those and then an hundred an hour to edit. Um that would be ideal. And then obviously like project by project, occasionally, depending on their budget, I could be like, okay, this just includes one round of edits. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, everything I've done so far has just included, it's been like a project rate where it includes everything. All right. Yeah, I mean, definitely think the project rate and then having the revisions, revisions on there is a good mm -hmm. way to go. Or just, you know, I'll tell, like for the most part, I won't, like I don't, I won't tell a client now if it's a half day or full day rate. I'll just let them know, like, hey, if it's an extra day, it'll be extra. But um, I really just try to price a project overall into what I need, and not like the clients tomorrow don't know what cameras I'm bringing. Well, then, like, mm -hmm. I don't know if you include any of that, but it's funny looking back at my old proposals versus my new ones, where I used to like, you're gonna get aperture light, you're gonna get this, this, and that, and like my new proposals would be like. We're gonna give you one 30 second video. It's gonna include music licensing, two rounds of revision, it'll be done in two weeks. And that's where like yeah. my contracts have on there. Mm -hmm. Um cool. Uh how are you prospecting those 15 to 20 emails you're sending out every day? Uh typically each day I choose a specific area to focus on. Uh so one day I'll focus on law groups, the next day I'll focus on dental, the next day is like flooring or roofing. Mm -hmm. Um so I try to choose like one group to go to each day. That way it's kind of all in the same area. Um and a lot of times I'll go on Google, I'll search like roofing companies near me, and I try to click on the top ones first because they're the ones that have the like their ads. Yeah. So I know yeah. they're at least paying for it. 
Um, so I do a few different searches under like roofing in the area to get a few different of those ad people popping up. Mm -hmm. And that usually gives me like, like seven to 10. And then the other ones, I just go below them for like the top listed and okay. get a better contacts, grab their emails. Cool. I mean, that's a great strategy. And then looking at the Google three pack, uh, you know, seeing who's more, um, you know, doing marketing. Um, but I think, you know, like I said, on the first part of like doing that extra little bit of research and emailing someone directly, I think mm -hmm. that's going to help a lot versus just, you know, random law group, like to who would make concern. Those email they go very, I get like 500 emails like that a day of like, we are for SEO services, blah, 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 blah. I'm just, yeah. I'm just, you know, delete. Cause they could tell if it's like, you know, a masked email, but if you spend a little bit of time to be like, Hey, I love what you guys did with this project. I mm -hmm. love what that customer said on the review that you guys go above and beyond. Like you want to take the time to show them that, Hey, you know, I did a little bit of research on, uh, before I called you. Yeah, for sure. That makes sense. Um, cool. Um, I don't know, you your, or what do you got? Um, so like say, so say you send out an email, you get a little interest in it. Is your, like, is your process in that, like, do, does your process with a client typically go email, call, meeting, shoot? Is that kind of the flow? Email, call, um, and then from that call, so like, with this guy that I sent out a proposal yesterday, he emailed me Sunday. Sunday, I got back to him, be like, "Hey, Steve, uh, we got your inquiry. Um, Look, mm -hmm. find out more about your video project needs. When's a good time for us to chat tomorrow?" Yeah. And then they'd be like, "Hey, four o'clock. I'll send a Google invite um, mm -hmm. with like my phone number. I have his phone number on there. Uh, send him a Google invite. We'll get on a call. And I start asking a bunch of questions. You know, what are you looking to do?" What kind of video? Why are you doing this? You know, they're like, "Hey, what's your budget?" And then they're like, "I don't have a budget. It's my first time." I'm like, "Great." So realistically, we're talking like fifteen to ten thousand, or like ten to five thousand. I'm like, "Oh, more mm -hmm. like three to five. I'm like, okay, cool, no worries. It's like, I want to put you, I want to put together a proposal for you with three pricing options. Um, you know, follow up in about two to three days to see how we're yeah. going there." So then I'll follow up um, with the phone call. If I don't hear if they, they don't pick up, then I'll drop an email to be like, hey, John, I want to follow up. Do you get a chance to look over this? And then from there, you got to know if they're interested or not, right? If they're like, oh, we're still yeah. we'll get back to you. Then they probably, you know, they don't want to move forward. And then sometimes shit happens. Like if I had a client, they ended up being like a $12,000 project. They're like two months later out of the blue, they're like, hey, ready to move forward. And I was like, I mm -hmm. thought you're dead. So like, <laughs> keeping track of those clients, you know, mm -hmm. to follow up and do a little nudge is always good. But, you know, let's say he's like, Hey, I saw a packet. I like package number three. I'd be like, all right, cool. I'm going to send you an agreement with the invoice. Um, you know, that sign, we can start scheduling and start production. And mm -hmm. then, you know, within a week or whatever, you know, we'll start shooting. So like the project I'm shooting tomorrow, the client messaged me, I think, Wednesday last week or Thursday, like before, like literally the day before Thanksgiving, it's like, Hey, we need to shoot a commercial before we got to have it ready by the 14th because we want to air it for Christmas. I'm like, cool. Yeah. So that process was very quickly, right? They already had the storyboard. They got everything else. So that moved fairly quickly, but that's typically what my process was like. Yeah. And for instance, like that, where it's quick turnaround, just cause I've had a few of those recently. Do you do like an expedite? Yeah, I'll charge a rush fee. So like, usually I'll ask, be like, how soon, be like, how soon do you need this? Yeah. Like we need this like in two days. I'm like, okay, we could do that, but there's gonna be a rush fee or normal rates for this. If you need to expedite it. And they'd be like, they'd be like, oh, we don't want to pay the rush fee. Like then are you okay with waiting in an extra week? Like, you know, we can <laughs> do one or the other. Like you want it fast, we do it fast. We might have to charge you extra. But that's the thing too. With those clients or that want to spend two or three hundred bucks, they don't see the value. Like they're not gonna want to spend. They don't want to. They don't want to get a rush fee, right? Like, but I have other yeah. clients. Like, I think our biggest project today was a thirty-second commercial that we did using stock footage, and it was like sixteen grand, and mm -hmm. they needed it done in three days. And I'm like, oh, three days. Oh, <laughs> over. I'm like, okay, working over the weekend. I'm like, 
we could do this, but it's going to be there. Like, all right, cool. You know, the same mm -hmm. thing tomorrow's. She's like, if you need to add a rush fee to it, I understand it's fast. So it's a little bit different when you're dealing with like, you know, two to three and up thousand dollar projects. When you're dealing with a two to three hundred dollar video, and you try to charge a rush fee. Yeah. Those things, uh, it's probably not going to work out. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Or you can uh, be like, hey, a rush fee is 200 bucks. Just mm -hmm. letting you know. Yeah. I feel like, because in my experience, the, the shoots that I've had, given they're all lower, like the lower budget ones, are typically the ones that have been the biggest pains, like as far as being like just annoying about a ton of edits. Um, I've had stuff where like I didn't protect myself as like the number of revisions I could provide. Mm -hmm. So it was just like a ton of small things that completely ate me alive. Um, as far as time, it was just annoying. And it's like they would want everything but not want to pay for it at all. Um, and they would want it fast. So that's why I was curious about the rush fees. Yeah. Yeah, usually the 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 least, or I mean, I don't know how to put this. So like the cheaper the client, the more demanding they are and the ones that usually mm -hmm. pay more. Cause it's um, like, if you don't follow the future, Chris Doe always says that yeah. it's like, you know, they have, but the client has more time than money. He's like, those are two of the clients who don't want to work with. It's like, I want to work with a client that has more money than time because he's willing to pay for that time. Yeah. Um, have you ever, one of the things that like I've been trying to reach out to is rather than just for like a lot of different reasons, rather than doing a ton of one-offs, um, trying to sell like retainer, like once a month type things where it's going in, uh, giving them whether it's like 25, 30 images for social media, and then like a, a short promotional video. Um, just cause one, it's financially nice to have consistent income, yeah, but also yeah. like, I think it's cool to be able to, like the more you grow with a brand, the more you better understand their needs and yeah. you're able to like see that growth. Um, have you had much success with that or are most of your clients kind of just like all over the place, occasionally doing multiple for one client or is most of it like returning customers? A little bit of both. It depends on the client and what they want to do with video. Um, and then normally with those retainer clients, they usually mm -hmm. get a way better rate as well because like you said, it is a consistent project. But I think yeah. the best way for you to promote, um, you know, that for someone to hop in a retainer or for you to do more than one and all. Because like for us, most of our clients, we do between, I'll say, like two to six videos with them, right? But it's like, mm -hmm. we, we know that they need a, a promo video, they need a testimonial video, they strictly ask questions video, they, they need a sales video. So all you need to do is have one of those videos to be able to show somebody of like, hey, this is what a monthly package for the next three months will look like, and this will be mm -hmm. deliverable of what you have. But you just need to put something together to show a client. I think that's yeah. the next thing of like, you have, you have something that you put together, um i have like a there's a spreadsheet that i send people that shows like the services i offer for monthly and then it shows like an example of that below it so it's kind of like a pdf all right should we send that over to me and i'll check it out and I'll give you feedback on that but yeah I mean, it's i think the best the best ones like that are the ones that have an internal marketing team their, mm -hmm. their company you know that has maybe more than one location and they could use the help um, but it's, there's clients out there that, that need that, you know what I mean? But they, yeah. like I said, the biggest thing for you right now is you need to work on your personal branding with your website. Mm -hmm. So you, you would work. say, you would say like when it, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is like the, just cause I'm younger, um, I don't necessarily understand like some of the most important values as far as like what people value in a business. Mm -hmm. I know that like for, um, like my dad is an example when it comes to social media, he doesn't see any value in Instagram because his client, he, like Instagram's the younger generation for the most mm -hmm. part. So he goes after Facebook instead because those are the people that he can go to for his business. Um, so you're, you're saying that like you, when it comes down to like something that would make a break a business, you think it's like having a strong website? For you, yes. Um, because you have the body of work, right? Like honestly, I think even if you like change the name of a business to something totally different, um, because with your portfolio, I don't think you have a problem, um, you know, selling yourself. I think the problem right now is that you're not optimized for search. So people can't find you. So they can't find your work. 
Mm-hmm. And then when people are finding you now and they click your website, your personal branding kind of shows that you, you know, you're doing weddings, you're doing real estate, you're doing a bunch of different things. It kind of shows that like, you know, you're still kind of getting it together. And that's yeah. where the risk for a business owner comes in. Cause like for me, mm-hmm. I don't have time to go through these things. Right. So like if I, if I, somebody reaches out to me and they're like, Hey, I can do this, 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 and that. I'm like, okay, you're doing too much. So like for me, yeah. like I'd rather find someone that's a little bit more established so I know they can help me. Cause I know that's going to mm-hmm. help me minimize risk. Um, so like I said, I think with you is doing a little bit of research online, look at a couple of different websites, and then just work on the, a little bit of your branding and messaging on your website. And then I would start, you know, reaching out to clients. Um, but they also don't know what your financial situation is. So if you need to get clients right away, then like you got to stay at it, but like you got to work on that website, like nonstop right now. Yeah, um, that makes sense. But that's where I would go. You no, know, get my front, my, my uh, homepage looking clean, um, <laughs> making a couple call to actions. And then I start reaching out. And then when you're reaching out to these people, you know, um, you know, you got good work. If I'm looking out, hit up a bunch of gyms, be like, hey, um, you know, sorry, you got this gym. I recently did a project with F45. These are some of the videos that I did. If you guys are ever interested in doing any video, I'd love to contact, uh, I'd love to connect with you guys. Short and, like, yeah. short and sweet. That's it. Mm-hmm. And then track those emails. You got to track them. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I would love to know if some of my emails have been viewed. <laughs> it makes your life a lot easier, bro. The wondering, like, the first time I saw, like, the whole thing work, and I was like, holy shit. Like, this is yeah. like, so much easier, because I'm not like, do I call them? Did they get the email? Did they not get the yeah. email? Like, you know what I mean? Well, it's like, you feel like it's, uh, like, even if they're not seeing it, I still want to know that so that I can know to change it. Um, so, like, the fact that that's a thing blows my mind. Like, I, I didn't know that that was allowed. <laughs> to yeah. have that so that's that's cool i definitely want to look into that um so i guess there's kind of other general questions like when when you think back on your career like were there any pivotal moments for you that like you made like a specific big change and that was something that like kind of pivoted your career and uh, like spurred a lot of growth um stuff you would shy away from like kind of anything like that um Things I'll shy away from is when people ask you to do a free video. Uh, I'm really big on doing free videos. I still do free mm-hmm. videos. It's one thing when you offer to do a free video. It's another thing when somebody asks you to do a free video for them. Yeah. Um, I think I the, did a ton of free videos at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing is honestly doubling your rates. Like from my second year to my third year, it was when I came across Chris Doe. And mm-hmm. I'm literally working on the same projects, except that, you know, when clients were asking me, I was, I literally just doubled my rate. I went from like 600 bucks, it was like 1200. And then they're like, okay, cool. And I'm like, fuck, they said yes to 1200. And the next one, I'd be like, yeah, 1500. And it wasn't until like, if you're getting no hesitation from your clients when you're giving out your price, you're too cheap. Mm-hmm. It's like right now I just closed another like big company and I was like, hey, three K for this. And they're like, all right, send over the invoice. I'm like, fuck. I'm like I could have okay. could have gotten more money on this. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's one of those things that you learn. And like now with uh Chris, he was like telling me like you need to you need to make your minimum for a video is five grand. I was like, fuck, dude. I was like, I was like, I hear what you're saying. But yeah. It's so hard for me to say no to a three thousand dollar project or, or this mm-hmm. and that, but you know, I say double your rate, especially, man, your work, bro, some of the stuff you've done, like, you got some good shit. I'll say double your rates be the first thing, um, you know, say no to the free videos. And honestly, like, go reach out to bigger agencies in your area to learn from people. Like, for me, I never worked for a media agency uh, before. I was lucky enough that I came from a hospitality background where I did a lot of, like, um, internal training with like staff and stuff like that um you know i worked for a a big catering company in new york where like i understood the logistics of like operating things like that so like but when it came down to like a meeting agency with contracts and all those things Mm -hmm. i never knew any of those things um and then even just going out to a bigger shoot from someone that's doing more than me because like you end up um 
learning so much from like when I start bringing on a producer or paying a pro like a producer to come and help me during a shoot was when I went to LA and I reached out to this uh, company called uh, Ridge Productions. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, I'm in LA for the weekend. If you guys got any um, shoots coming up, I'll literally go pick up garbage, get coffee, like whatever you guys need. And then just throughout that process of being on set, like I saw what the producer was doing with the cinematographer was in mm -hmm. charge of and like all these different things. But like, there's all those little things. I'm like, well, honestly, what they're doing is not that much different than me, except they have more people and different people have yeah. different roles. But like, it was one of those things that like, I just didn't know, right? Mm -hmm. So like, I would go try to learn from somebody else, which you're kind of already doing because you're working with those two other guys. But I'll try to get my foot in the door with like some bigger companies as well. Um, and like, I'll just go in, you know, when you're talking to them, even with these bigger video production companies, because sometimes um, what happens is like, they might get a job that's like 3K and they're like, no, that's too little for us. And then be like, well, we got this guy that does yeah. cheaper, which I have somebody, um, one of the girls that works for me, Alexis, she'll do that. I have a, a project that's 500 bucks. I'd like, yo, Alexis, you know, do this video. Like, you know, mm -hmm. for her, she's like, oh, 500 bucks. She's like, fuck yeah. Like, I'll take this all day. Yeah. Um, so I'll go like learn from somebody else. For sure. That makes sense. And then yeah, learn I had, from uh, this. Like, I like, I stopped learning so much about cinematography and so, and that's the thing too, like for, you know, for me, I wanted to find a way out of what I was doing and I love doing video. Mm -hmm. So like I learned more about how to run a video production business versus being a videographer. Like in my position now, I'd rather hire someone like you that is so passionate about video and I could help, you know, create a direct and just different mm -hmm. things. Um, but that's something else you got to think about is like, you know, do I want, do I want to be a cinematographer, a DP, or do I want to, you know, run a video production business? Cause the roles, you know, they definitely cross at one point, but at a certain point you're going to have to figure out which way you want to, you know, head your ship. Yeah. That makes sense. I had a, uh, one of the shoots I was on for major insurance was out in LA and it was the first like actual production so i was i was specifically doing their social media video and then they were doing like their tv commercials um and i walk in and i have my little like a7 III on a on like a zion crane and they're walking in with like Ari alexas and they have like probably a crew of like 100 people and then you see them with like this massive crane coming in to hold the camera and there's like this little short dude next to it with his little gimbal and i felt ridiculous but it was insane just to like just to sit, sit back and watch like the scope of it all. I feel like in a lot of ways, we do all the same things that they're doing. They just do it to like the nth degree with like a, a lot more meticulous and just everything about it. Um, but it was amazing just to see the process of it all. Oh, like, yeah. And they go back to like, like having the video village to see, let their clients, like they just sat there and watched it the whole time and gave their feedback. Um, something I started doing then was like approving on site with client about things because at the beginning I was super scared for some reason one of the first people I talked to was saying like never show your camera to a client um which kind of just like stuck with me for some yeah. reason so I always felt super weird about showing them like in person um but then whenever I bought a, a camera monitor rather than just going off of my uh, my screen to start showing them on the on the shoots it made it so much easier because I was able to get like what they wanted rather than just kind of guessing um so that, that, I loved that experience. That was awesome for me. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, that's a big thing. I guess that was a lesson for me as well was exactly what you said was like, it's one thing you thinking you got the shot and you get it back home and you pull it up and you show the client and the client's like, I don't like that. Um, yeah. You know, but then on other situations, we'll film something like, hey, here's a shot. Like, take a look at this. And you also, you want to get them excited. So like with this beer commercial we're going to shoot tomorrow, when I was working with the client during that shoot, I'll play back some really good shots that I knew. And the client would be like, oh my God, this is great. They'd be like, let me send this, let me send a photo of this to my boss. You know, like everyone's yeah. getting excited. But, you know, let's say a shot something. She's like, well, I don't like, you know, there'll be like those situations that they're like, well, there's a water bottle in the back corner of the table. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, can we remove that? But if you show the client that frame and the client likes it, you know what I mean? Like you're kind of saving yourself. So you'd be like, well, you know, I've written this by you, you approved it. So, you know, here we are. Yeah, that makes sense.
Yeah. Um, you pretty much covered every kind of question I had. <laughs> Dope. Um, I want to say I appreciate your time. I think it's cool just because, like, especially on YouTube, when you go to videography, this kind of stuff you see about it's all, like, cinematic B-roll or shooting in slow motion. And it's, like, it's cool to build some of those skills, but I don't think they translate well to actually making a profitable business. Yeah. Um, and especially when it comes to, like, money-wise, it people aren't very transparent about it or they talk about the stuff that isn't important. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely appreciate your challenge. Even just like the recording of the calls that you do with some of your clients yeah. is so helpful just because I like, when it comes to the business aspect, I feel like when you think of a good business person, you kind of think of the person that's like confident and assertive. And it's funny listening to some of your calls because you're super chill yeah. and you're just kind of like answering their questions nonchalantly. And you're like, oh, okay, like that works too. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm waiting on the day I'm going to get in trouble with one of my clients and I'm going to be like, yeah, well, I just saw your YouTube video and uh, I don't know yeah. you're recording me. And I'm like, oh, fuck. It's I, just, I thought about that. But you, uh, you censor it. You censor it. Yeah. So I know, but you know how people are, so. Yeah. So, and so what's going to be your first step of action? Yeah, for sure. I definitely want to look into my website. Um, I think the easiest thing for me to do right away is just to go into kind of reseparating the albums as far as like, getting rid of events, weddings, and then just separating promotional and down to like specific, whether it's restaurant, hotels, things like that. Uh -huh. um, I definitely want to look into SEO a little bit, but I think before I do that, I want to make sure my website's at like a place I'm happy with. Yeah, do that. Um, so I need to add, I want to add in like the new contact, the call to action. Um, I want to do a little bit, I haven't found a template on Squarespace that I've like absolutely loved. And like, I've seen people that have made some killer Squarespace websites. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how they've done it. Um, uh, what I used to use is Brian. 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 Let me see. Uh, Squarespace. Yeah. And then like, you know, the logo stuff I told you about. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So our yeah. clients, blah, blah, blah. blah. Like I said, you got a, you got a good book, you know what I mean? So might as well show people the, mm -hmm. you know, what you're working on. So Yeah, that makes sense. All right, cool, man. Well, uh, bro, please follow back up with me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you get your website up, let's do a follow-up call so we're able to show people the transition and then I can help guide you and I'll give you feedback on uh, what you're doing over there. Yeah, that sounds amazing. I'd love that. Um, I appreciate your time. It means a lot. Of course, man. Uh, just keep hustling, keep crushing it, and I'll see you next time. All right. See ya. Peace.